Welcome to a special Leadership Reflections episode of the Good Listening To podcast, the show and podcast that features The Clearing, where all good questions come to be asked and all good stories come to be told. And where all my guests have two things in common. They're all creative individuals and all with an interesting story to tell. And Leadership Reflections is where I wrap an episode of the podcast with its strong and established storytelling construct around you as a leader. Who are you? What's your story? And what leadership lessons learned along your way would you like to share with us? So yes, welcome to a special episode of the Good Listening To podcast. Are you sitting comfortably? Then we shall begin. Boom and in the room, we've got the very lovely, talented, wonderful Colin Hunter from Potential Squared in the Good Listening to Your Life and Times with me, Chris Grimes, clearing. Yay! I'm Hurrah. just noticing my double chins here, though, Chris. That's not good. I've got to go. But Nobody's looking at that. We're looking at the the Newcastle. The Alan Newcastle Shearer, Shirt Lake. Yeah. Shirt Lake, man, Shirt. behind your head, <laughs> as they say in well your those parts so yeah. you must tell us more about that because only when we set up today do we appreciate this man not only do you have a new book colin hunter you've got a signed shirt by alan shearer you lucky man i know my hero my hero uh, well actually he grew up just down the road from me as well as it grew up in gosford okay. so when i look at it it's just oh yeah but at the moment we won't talk about that because i know because i'm a newcastle fan i know nothing about football and for all the Leeds fans you know, who have suffered for so long and are now getting better, yeah, uh, we're hoping we're on the same trajectory. Yeah. And the story behind the story, because he grew up near you, is that a shirt you just sort of attacked him one day and ripped yeah. it off his back? Or what, <laughs> how did you get that? No, actually, he is the smallest man in the world. I oh. met him on a plane one day and um, <laughs> I made the mistake. He was, he was getting on a plane. And as he was getting on the plane, um, I didn't realise it was him. And he was going to do Match of the Day live. And he, he beautifully folded his jacket and lay it in the, the overhead bin. And I came on and I thought, no, sod that. You can't have your jacket in here. So I put my bag straight in. And it was only then that a, a man in front started talking to him. And worked out was Alan Shearer. So I was looking at Match of the Day that night thinking, I wonder if that crease in that jacket is because of my bag. So, yeah. Whoa. So lucky he yeah. didn't nut you for putting your bag on top of his, he I mean, his, in the back of the neck yeah but amazing amazing Lovely. amazing man yeah love him to bits but yeah at the moment the team is not exactly doing that well. and a world exclusive you know nobody heard that he said he's quite short so he's that's all good yes and if i meet him no you a giant you're he is a giant of a superhero and footballing legend anyway exactly. talking of legends you are indeed your own legend because you run potential squared international and this is a special leadership reflections episode of my good listening to podcast I'm going to bounce you along the structure mm. uh, and for anyone who doesn't know yet, it's got um, it's it's all to play for because it's a clearing, a tree, a lovely, juicy storytelling exercise called five, four, three, two, one. And by the way, in the clearing for you, there's going to be a plinth uh, of <laughs> for you to put your book on. No. Obs, obs, obs. And nice. then it's um, there's going to be some alchemy, some gold, which, again, could be about your book, obviously. Mm -hmm. And then there's a cheeky bit of Shakespeare and a cake. Wonderful. So, yes, Love you've it. written a new book and it's called Be More Wrong. And in fact, you've actually gone to be more wrong dot com. You've got a website for it as well. Yeah. And I know that it's how failure makes you an outstanding leader. Mm. Uh, so just I know it's three years in its inception and, and its journey and your many, many years of leadership experience. But just tell me quickly the story behind the story of what the advent of Be More Wrong yeah, I spent half of my life basically screwing up and trying to live a life that wasn't really the one I wanted to live. And I didn't realize it until I, um, you know, at that point, I fell over. I had a bit of a breakdown and uh, and the rest of my life has been trying to rediscover myself. So and it's funny when you write down your stories, a lot of my wrongs, my be more wrongs have actually caused me to be OK and to be successful and learn from them. So I've got a passion uh, through a hero's journey concept in the book to drive difference for 18 to 30 year olds and young people in terms of their career. So they, they I want them to make mistakes because it's be more wrong, but I want them to make them in that, a direction and a purpose. And that's the whole thing about the book is how as a leader do I do that? Yeah. And very relatable out of adversity comes great creativity. And as yeah. you know, it's not how you're knocked over in life. It's how you get up again. 
And yeah. I'm, this may even be in the book, but I'm really looking forward to you telling me this. But it's this notion of it, it's about falling upwards and how you adapt and change based yeah. on adversity. Because there's a lot of people out there who are what we call driven achievers that work so hard, but actually they're they're you know they're, they're knocking down walls that they only they are creating. And actually, the, the piece is how you get back up. But actually, are you are you getting back up for the right reasons? Are you heading in the right direction? I do so much coaching, mm -hmm. which is almost can we take those clothes off because you're wearing them because somebody told you to to do it? Ah, uh, yes. What clothes do you want to put on? So they that's why the actors in the background, how we connected is massive for me because, you know, how do you strip back to who you truly are? But some people, and I, love, I include myself in there, needed a basic workout to get me back to understanding what it is I exactly do, makes me tick, and what my purpose is. So that's what we And in, in your timeline, and thank you for being very honest in your disclosure about the breakdown that you had, uh, mm. w when was that? in your timeline that that happened 30 30 years old so uh -huh. roughly um yeah and i mean it, it sounds like it was a it was a good life i was partying i was working hard i was being very successful at procter and gamble as a sales rep um but i was seeking um i was seeking something and therefore i was following newcastle at the time so i was going to every home in a way match mm -hmm. i was you know doing work working hard but because I was working hard on something I didn't enjoy, didn't enjoy. I was good at it, but mm. I didn't enjoy it. Um, my battery was not being recharged. And therefore, I was in the evening, I was working in a bar just to seek out some conversations, seek out some, some people to talk to. And therefore, you can imagine the story. I was burning the candle at both ends, yeah. ran out of energy. Um, and therefore, one of the, the books that really kick-started me over the last five years is uh, James Clear and Atomic Habits. And when he said, we don't fall, we don't rise to the level of our objectives, we fall to the level of our systems. Realize I was running on empty, to quote a phrase. I was literally running emotionally. Mm. So as a, as a Geordie block, I went back and cried for about two weeks in front of my parents. Um, and it was a great GP up in, um, because GPs sometimes get a bad name and I just, I don't see it. My dad was a doctor and he just sat me down and said, uh, you're you're running an empty your energy levels need to change so you need to change your life and that's where it started obviously what's also profound is it is not weak to be vulnerable uh, and indeed you know very relatable you described your sort of breakdown for you which is obviously seismic at 30 i described my being 42 and i'm 58 mm -hmm. now as being my year of the wibble <sighs> i had anxiety that i'd never experienced before but i know that i'm now more self-aware and grateful mm -hmm. for that journey yeah. even though it was incredibly and indeed the pandemic has caused its own blah, 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 you know in oh. all of our worlds so oh, yes yeah. congratulations for writing the book so um, yeah. have you got Thank the book you. to hand we obviously need to sort of share it show and it put it on you. the outside of Alan Shearer and cover it over there and then put it out over here so yeah no this is be more wrong how uh, failure makes you an outstanding leader which is an I, interesting concept in itself yes yeah. and in fact the comedian in me has to tell the joke of how can you tell an outstanding Sorry, how can you call an awesome farmer? He's always outstanding in his field. <sighs> anyway, yeah. let's now bring you into the clearing and we're gonna, there'll be a deliberate invitation to, to go deep on your own URLs, Colin. Now, yep. Potential Squared International, what I in, really enjoyed researching you, by the way, it's mm. high impact leadership assessment and development solutions. And the real cutting edge thing about what you do is the virtual reality. I mean, mm. I've, I've never even put on a pair of virtual reality goggles and I'm an actor and you use actors to do it. So it's, a, it's really hooky and fascinating. Yeah. I Googled you before I started because I could. And uh, there's also a tree surgeon uh, called Is there? Colin Hunter. Nice. There's, nice. A, a, there's a poet from New Zealand as well. Uh, ah, you go know, you. Before... Thank you for not stealing my thunder because there's also a oh, sorry. artist of Victorian seascapes who's dead now, but here's some of his stuff's in the tape, please. Well, hey. So, so, so maybe so you it's funny, actually, Chris, because one of the, the old things I used to say, one of my coaches used to was talking to me and said, uh, I, who are you? And I said, I'm Colin Hunter. And she would, she just said it. She said, the Colin Hunter? And I went, no, just Colin Hunter. And she went, no, the Colin Hunter. And now when I'm standing up doing anything, the, the trigger for me is, are you Colin Hunter today or the Colin Hunter? It's just, it's a simple little technique, but it's amazing. I was at my dad's funeral giving the obituary you know the the speech and i was just about to go and 
I am the Colin Hunter. And it was uh, amazing. So even though there's other Colin Hunters who are probably more amazing than I am out there, I am the Colin Hunter. Just You are. Yeah. And we're, we're blessed to have the Colin Hunter <laughs> in the good listening to Leadership Reflections Clearing. And by the way, again, that's really relatable. I do something similar with the construct of I am Spartacus. As opposed nice. to, uh, am I Spartacus? Do you mind if I'm Spartacus? <laughs> uh, would it be okay with you guys if I was kind of like Spartacus? So when I'm training people, my own metaphorical, the Colin Hunter, and I might use that actually. Obviously, I'll be the, the Chris Grimes. because I was be just you. about to say, yeah. Yeah, you be you, I'll be me. <laughs> <laughs> we can both be Spartacus. Hurrah. We can. Hello. So, yes, we will talk about the book increasingly as we go mm. through, but, but you know, it, it's up to you. So here mm. we go. Um, yeah. The first part of the construct is, um, and thank you for doing this, pre-preparation before we started so uh, first of all it's all going to take place in the clearing of your choice so what is a clearing like for you the Colin Hunter where do you go to get clutter free inspirational and able to think so it's interesting because I've this one of the most powerful questions I've had for a while because of the obvious answer is I wrote quite a bit of the book at Cape Cod Okay. And that was where I went. And if you can imagine a beautiful scene, sunset, me sat with my laptop, sat on the beach, watching the sun go down, that amazing moment where the sun just hits, you know, the, the distance and it pops. And I used to sit watching the ocean, uh, typing, working, inspired. And the second moment I did, I went to a lighthouse in the Cape at Chatham. And it was the lighthouse that Chris Pine uh, shot the movie in, where he was going over the the barriers to save, or over the uh, the barriers in the the ocean to go save a um, a liner that had gone aground. But there was something very romantic and very soothing that my Airbnb, the light from the lighthouse, used to flick in in the evening as I was sitting writing and working here. So I'm very visual, and those two places just gave me enough to to write the book so that's that's my clearing yeah wow so specifically the lighthouse the the b and b near the yep. lighthouse with the light going round and round yeah and in your timeline again and thank you for being so specific i love that uh, how many mm. years ago is that oh it's about three and a half years ago from the half. book so yeah and it's yeah, it's it's you know it's that fanciful bit you know you say oh i'd love to to go live there retire there and you wonder whether it'd be the same in the middle of winter when the snow's on the ground it's freezing cold and there's nobody else there but yes. at the time it was right it was the right clearing for me to, to have my space and yeah. by the way uh, that makes complete sense now in the cutting edge of the virtual reality because you just said you're very visual so i completely mm. get that and i i just love that also i had a lovely notion when you said i was doing my typing i had this idea of you being there with an old style typewriter <laughs> <laughs> ding, ding, ding. as it slaps the page but you know it could it was probably a very swanky um you know technological laptop of yeah. yeah the amount so, of errors i was making the typing it would have been a lot of tipex put it that way to correct that so were you on your own writing i i heard mm. that you were there you know being with your father and being present mm. to him but you were there on your own I was there on my own. And I, I think this is one of the things that I've learned from other people is I, I'm an extrovert. I love people around me. I, and part of the problem when I had my breakdown was I was seeking out other people. But what I've learned about myself is actually that some of my best creativity is when I can fall out of my own thinking. And that means that I need to put myself into a space. Sorry, yeah. that's delicious. Say that again. Fall out of my own thinking. Fall out of my own thinking. So I had a coach called Jamie Smart, and he wrote a book called Clarity, and he coached me three days. And his whole principle is as a child, we have this self-correcting system as a mind that can just, you know, I can be your friend and we can be laughing. The next moment we can be fighting and crying and, and then we self-correct. And as we grow up and become adults, we layer freezing into our thinking. So the analogy he used for me was the Colorado River carving through rocks, powerful the adult version is this little trickle underneath the frozen thinking and therefore the river and the power of what your thought is diminishes and all he did it was hilarious he charged me a hell of a lot of money which was great i paid that but he said at the beginning of three days he said right up in the flip chart everything's wrong with your life you know and that was three pages of minute di detail about everything that i could think about and then at the end of the three days having taught me to fall out my own thinking he then spoke to me and said, so let's go back to the flip chart. What's relevant? No, none of it was relevant. None of it. He did allowed me to, to get the Colorado River flowing back into my mind. But it doesn't happen automatically. I need to go create my space, do my meditation, 
everything else daily to allow myself to be in that mode. And that's where my creative juices flow. Yeah. And, and, and really sublime use of geography in a lot of your visual references. Loving mm. that. <laughs> it's all about the storytelling. That's great. Yeah, and that's it, my degree. <laughs> geography. Go you. you go. And so I'm going to arrive slightly intrusively now uh, with yeah. a tree in your clearing. So, uh, and I love lighthouses too, by the way. Uh, there's a really good children's book called The Lighthouse Keeper's Lunch, which is where the seagulls keep nicking it. Uh, so his wife, they have this wire and she ends up putting mustard in the sandwiches so the seagulls don't like it anymore. But anyway, that's a book reference for you, which yeah. anyway, I love lighthouses. So I'm going to arrive with your beacon of clarity, with your new book in hand, um, with a tree. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're going to shake your tree to see which storytelling apples fall out. And this is really to get into the story behind the man that's written the book, if you like. So yeah. uh, this is where, how do you like these apples? You've had five minutes to have thought about uh, Colin Hunter, author of Be More Wrong. Four things that have shaped you, and you're giving mm -hmm. us inferences of that anyway. Uh, three things that inspire you. Two things that never fail to grab your attention and borrowed from the film up. I like to go, oh, squirrels at this point because it's One monsters favorite. of distraction. Uh, and then one quirky or unusual fact about you that we couldn't possibly know until you tell us. Uh, don't panic, Mr. Manor. You don't have to shake the tree in a wanna, but it's over to you to interpret and crunch on those lovely crunchy monkeys as you want. Lovely. I, I found the four things, some reflection. I went down, I'll tell you what, I went down the movies uh, immediately. So I have four things that inspire me because I pay it forward. Cheesiest American film ever, but had a massive impact on me in my career and... And I looked at Pay It Forward and I said, so everything I do in a network, I walk into a room, what are the three things that I could do for somebody else? And I'd spent the rest of my life trying to grab things from others, even though I was kind, caring. Um, I wasn't full of care, careful in what I did. And the Pay It Forward principle for me started my networking journey. So the inspiration for that has been massive. Um, and I still cry at the end. So, you know, there's a number of things that movies... It's a Wonderful Life is a similar thing for me. Yes, gosh. Yeah, but yeah. but Pay It Forward was the one. And it was connected to um, the second one, if I can indulge and make a link. So there was a great man called Randy Taylor, who was a, he was a student of my grandfather's. And he brought the North and the South Church together in, in the US. Um, and my grandfather was a professor of theology. So you get, I was trying to live up to his reputation as a, as I was growing up. But Randy Taylor had just this unique ability to not only give to other people, no matter what their views, he might have, you know, diametrically opposed views to the person in front, but he consciously brought in different views, angry people uh, together. And I just have this vision of him sitting on a rocking chair in Montreat, North Carolina, in the Blue Ridge Mountains, not of Virginia, of North Carolina and just rocking away, smoking his pipe, which my grandfather used to do, and bringing in diverse points of view. And one of those was me, my 21 year old, misguided, fun loving self. And he, he listened to me in, in a way that, wow, I was the most important person in the world. And since then, I've always just tried to, to channel 20% of him in what I do. So that's the second one. And it's linked to, the third one, which I was going to go down another film, but I'm going to, I'm going to take my daughter in this. Um, and both daughters inspire me in different ways. But they are the greatest teachers. I think being a parent for me is, has opened my eyes massively. And my eldest daughter is amazing. At, uh, she used to come in and sit at my desk in the office. And she would sit doing her homework on the floor, only as kids do with her legs sort of tucked underneath and working away. And she was listening to me and watching me. I didn't realize this as I was running the business. And at one point, she just kicked my leg. And I looked down at her. Nobody else could see her. And she just mouthed up to me, bully, bully. And I just, I stopped. And I realized what I'd been doing to somebody in the office could have been seen as bullying, interpreted in that way. And she, through the eyes of a a young 13 year old was just giving me that feedback. And it, with tears in my eyes later on, I thanked her, I sat her down because I think she was scared that she'd done something wrong. Yeah. And I said, no, that was the most powerful moment for me, for her at that age to be able to have the confidence to say to somebody, well, it can be right, bang on. But she did it to me the other day. So I was 
cooking with her and she was wandering around doing something and the food was nearly ready and I needed to do what she needed to do and uh, did the old woman will you concentrate and she's almost the same size as me and she turned around she got to her full height she looks me in the eye and says I have a name so in the spirit of being more wrong she's been an inspiration to me in terms of if a 13 year old now 17 year old can do that and we can encourage people to amplify their voices um, and say what they're thinking. Great. And I'm going to link it back to the youngest daughter who's yeah, anxious, but now goes on stage. So she's, you know, three slots in the school show. She's up there, guitar singing, did a solo in front of the queen. Um, so wow. she's overcome something very different, but is in the same place. So massively inspired by youth, young people, but I'm proud and to be inspired by my daughters as well. So that was three. Yes. Yeah. Lovely, lovely stuff. Um, I think the other one for me is um, I want to take an imposter syndrome view in this because that's been massive for me. And I hinted at my grandfather was a professor of theology. My father invented well, the use of uh, echo for babies' hearts, saved thousands of lives, impacted probably millions of lives now. Um, and so therefore I always looked up to them and wondered and I almost I, in their eyes when I saw them I almost didn't get there and you know my grandfather wanted me to be able to to learn Tamashanta by Rabbi Burns and be able to you know recite it I just I got through about two chapters and went no I can't do those verses I couldn't do this <laughs> and therefore I was living through their lens and their measuring systems it's and it's one of my favorite coaching expressions which is whose measurement system are you using for your life um, so I look up to them and, you know, uh, both of them now passed away. But that, that's resonant, by the way, with that lovely thing about Einstein, about the supposition of you, if you measure a fish for its ability to climb a tree, <laughs> whose yes. lens are you using for the measurement? Yes. Oh, the fish I, will probably feel know. a bit crap about itself, but. I would. <laughs> <laughs> and measuring in there. So I think there's something in there, but it's, but it's fascinating because our measurement systems change as well. So the imposter syndrome, you know, so I published a book and everybody's like, oh, wow, that's a great achievement. I'm nervous about the reviews. And then somebody ah. else says, don't, don't, don't look at the reviews. Don't look at the reviews. Like, How can you not look at your reviews? You know, the, why? And then and it's very hot was... off the press, isn't it? We're only about two or three days into your publishing, aren't we? Yeah, I'm still on the high of the chocolate cake. So the Be More <laughs> Wrong chocolate cake, they made an exact replica of the book. And it was just, you couldn't have told it was different apart from when you tasted it. And it was uh, chocolate sponge. It's such favorite. a good book. You're going to eat it. And by the way, yeah. we're coming on to cake later on. You're going to get oh, a bit of cake. Like cake and eat it. Yeah. So so there's, there's something in there about, um, and I've learned this hard way, is that we never lose our judgmental voices in our heads. We never, whatever stage we are, you know, and I'm sure Buddhists and other people would tell you that you just, You've always got those constant judges in your head, doubting. And therefore, for me, and I was having a debate with a, a friend, I'm launching a project looking at 18, 30-year-olds and mentoring. And there was a piece he was challenging me about the use of um, disadvantaged. You know, so I'm aiming at disadvantaged communities. And he rightly was having his point of view saying, I, I don't like the word disadvantaged because he does a lot of work in those communities. He doesn't like the label. And so we had this debate with me saying, but I, people need to know where they're starting the journey. And for a lot of these people, that label for me as imposter syndrome is where I start my journey. So how do I go from, I need to know where I start to go. And a lot of people are, are receiving whatever it is, feedback from the world that's telling them something that they are not good at or that they don't have, or they have no power to achieve. Um, and my role and job and what I'm inspired by is is helping others to to see that we are our own power. Yeah, we are our own creativity, as you've done in your life as well. That's what we need to do. So imposter syndrome would be the next one. And so, I, am I allowed to that four? That's, that's four, four, four things that have shaped you beautifully. I'm rubbish at numbers. <laughs> no, I, I think I'll, I'm trying to do the math. Sometimes I get lost myself, but I'm just going, oh. Awkward. But now three things that inspire you. And if there's any overlap, don't worry, because sometimes, you know, what's shaped and influenced mm. know, can, can overlap. So, so I'm, I'm inspired by great people. So I, and therefore listening to their stories is is what inspires me. So whether it's audible in the morning, I do about an hour of listening while I'm working out in the morning. 
So I was listening to somebody who's about design, uh, design thinking and inclusion. Today, I was listening to um, somebody on sleep the other day. That's fascinating. So one of the things that inspires me is listening to people with, with a curiosity, with almost my imposter syndrome, which is teach me, teach me. Um, and then my second thing that inspires me is experiments. So a great man, Andrew Webster, who is a humble Canadian who will never say that he's great. You know? And I always keep saying, you're great. He says, no, 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 you're the good. It's that argument about who's the, no, you're the mentor. No, I'm the mentor. No, yeah. So that, <laughs> I've been in there. But he, he introduced me to experimentation. And so the other thing that inspires me is getting up each day and thinks, so what's my latest experiment? Whether it's a whoop that I'm wearing on my wrist to measure sleep. Whoop. Yeah. Um, measuring in terms of breath. So I'm doing a lot of breath work, doing a lot of coaching work and trying new styles and coaching. So I'm inspired by experimentation. And if you put the third one, which is I'm inspired by being more wrong, then it doesn't matter what you do, because whatever you do is is right because it's wrong. Yeah. If it fails. And I just, I love that concept when people say, I really struggle with failure and say, so do I. But if I do some low risk, low cost experiments in my life and just expect 80% of them to fail and go, wow, that's a, that's a good learning. It's made me one. think of the artistic notion of just flopping paint at a canvas, actually, <laughs> flicking it on. Different yeah. Colors. Hey, flop that on. I don't know if you've seen that video of the, um, the gentleman playing the cello and it's a classic one where if you don't have a growth mindset you have a fixed mindset then when you make a mistake it's like oh we crumble whereas you know in improv and the work you do it doesn't matter you know you just go with the flow so if, if you have that growth mindset which is oh i found another way um to do something that mindset is huge and and if you link it to music which is another passion of mine then it's jazz so it doesn't really matter so so what's the jazz you're creating in your life through experimentation accepting failure and going with them people say well that's all right for you Cole yeah you you, you know you're successful you've got a bit of money but yeah but I'm risking it all on a new project on the basis of I couldn't live my life unless I was experimenting. And ah, full circle, business. play it forward, as you said at the beginning, the film. Yeah. I like that. So there's a philosophy yeah. ingrained in that. Lovely. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so those are my three things. We're still in the foliage of your apple tree. And I think now we're going to crunch on your lovely apples, if you'll pardon that particular expression, of uh, two things that never fail to. Oh, squirrels, grab your Squirrel. attention, please. Yeah. And actually, we have a, an expression in our, our business, which was out of that film. Because I am renowned for squirreling off, yeah, and doing other things. Oh, and shiny. so we have <laughs> shiny. Focus, not sprinkle is the, the one. But one thing that definitely inspires me is stories of or talking to people, young people who do amazing things. So there's a, um, a lady called Izzy, who I met cycling each Sunday, I used to go to a cafe afterwards for a coffee. And she, I met her first, probably she was about 15, 16. And so I kept cycling, kept seeing her every Sunday, and she went through her A-levels. And then on the day her A-level results come in, cycling and caught up, said, how are you doing? And then she told me her story. And at the age of 18, she was off in Bangladesh and she was in the slums of Bangladesh, working with people who are disabled, working to create difference, to, to give them a, a different life. Whether well, it was opportunities with needlework and clothes or whether it was opportunities in terms of care, age of 18. And therefore she ran this fundraising with all our cyclists and got in a, a, a Korean Indian place. And she stood up at the age of 18 with massive confidence. So she, that's what inspires me and squirrels. And she's actually in between college at Newcastle. She's working with us to help us on the new project, the new, the 500, because she can live her story now with us to help those people that can't help themselves or, Struggle and, and there's such lovely empowerment in the in the awareness for an 18 year old that they are absolutely the future. I mean, societally, we know that with Emma Ram Ramakan, sorry, Ram the, the tennis player. I, yes, her, I know. Name, I yeah. Rama, I keep calling her flipping can do because she's awesome. <laughs> Rama she's can do. Anyway, absolutely she's awesome, amazing. But yeah. she's 18. So that's what yeah. resonated then. But anything yeah. possible. No, I agreed. So that's one thing. And then the other one is linked to new thinking. Um, and that can be, <laughs> it's rubbish for my team because I'll go to a conference and I'll listen to 10 speakers. And if my COO, Sharon, allows me to do it, I'll bring every 50, 50 different things back to the business. So suddenly we're creating new products. But actually now somebody said, you know, leave it for seven, eight days, nine days, 10 days. 
and then filter, filter, focus, not sprinkle. What are the one or two things you need to bring? But I could sit and listen to other people. I could sit and listen to podcasts. So, I mean, listening to your podcast, listening to the stories of the people who've been on, you know, the, the stories of Stan and Stan Laurel on improv. And I could sit and listen to other people's stories because they inspire me to think, so, okay, improv, how could I do that? Comedy, how could I do it? And that's what inspires me, yeah. And, and by the way, in terms of playing it forward, there is something I need to sincerely thank you for. By the way, that was very generous of you to do that. But about mm. 10 years ago, when I was in a bit of a transitional period in my life, we did meet up and hook up and I started nearly to work with you. But yeah. you, you put me through an assessment centre where mm. actually you gave me great confidence, which I now thank you for with hindsight, because you evaluated me um, and I hadn't really experienced coaching before where you congratulated me on the on the really deep seismic quality of my listening. Mm. Which is something I remembered you know, the, it wasn't just you. It was a couple of individuals, too, that I because I did. a, I think I did a, a, a sort of a, a test coaching session with you, I think. Yeah, it was. So yeah. I got me on the path of giving you a good listening to. But anyway, full yeah. circle, la -de blah So love yep. all of that. And now a quirky or unusual fact about you that we couldn't possibly know until you tell us. So I've got I've got two things I had in my mind. One is which I've also uh, this has come out. I am. A, I'm an aspirational dancer. Um, I wanted to be a dancer when I was a kid, and that was my thing. But <laughs> my daughters would laugh wholeheartedly at the moment and say, really, with those moves? How the hell could you be a dancer? But I think I, that's why I love these dance like nobody's watching you, when you've got these people yes. on the videos on the beach going. You know, there's part of me is who's who's been so buttoned up as an individual most of my life because I didn't want to make a fool of myself. Uh-huh. Now I'm um, the. I think the dancing is about first my love of music, but secondly, just go with what the flow takes you to. And uh, so, yeah, quirky. Yes. But but uh, the other one is dog loving. I just uh, okay. If I the loudest and hardest I've cried in my life is when my dog died, and I I'm now volunteering at the local dog rescue uh, place to walk dogs. And there's <laughs> I don't know if it's that I, I have a love for humans, but I have a deep love for dogs and just being able to sit. And when I was doing my speech on the uh, the book launch earlier on this week, one of my team brought in their dog, Thor, who's a boxer. And there's just this brilliant photograph of Thor. And it looks like Thor's the only one in the room, yeah, as I'm giving my speech, but he's listening <laughs> to me. And you're going to tumbleweed, tumbleweed, but Thor is, you know, well, exactly the same dynamic. It's only a dog called Thor that's listening to us <laughs> talk now. Oh, fantastic. You're listening, Thor, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, I love the idea of you throwing some shapes, which links beautifully to your book, Be More Wrong, Experimentation, Throw Some Paint at the Wall, Throw Some Shapes, Dance Like Nobody's Watching. Great philosophy. Yeah, it's good. Okay, so I think we've shaked your tree. We're at yep. your village. We're now staying in the clearing, but moving away from the tree. And now, if I may, there's a your book's called Be More Wrong, but what could be more right, Colin Hunter, than having a sort of plinth oh, with your book within the clearing? Now, you, you're giving us loads about the book anyway, but is there anything specific that you'd like to say uh, about the book? Yeah, I think the, the, the one on the plinth is... Um, I've done a lot of work around three words, confidence, conviction, and connection. And I've learned that, you know, confidence is about the physicality and vocality. And you know, from your acting time, that is massive when you're up on the stage, mindset and other pieces in there. And leaders need that. And people need that. Just that ability to vocally, physically stand and be the Colin Hunter. The second bit is conviction. And this is how values relate in and work with the work you do. That's the bit I've started to learn is how do I craft my values into a way that I can make a difference in the world and work with. And then there's the connection piece, which is the bottom line is no plan survives con first contact with the enemy. So how do I, how do I deal with that? So if I had one thing on my plaque, it would be anti-fragile. Yeah. The ability to be almost thriving in chaos and thriving in what's going on around me, because we all need that even more than ever now. And how do you get that? So therefore, we've got to stretch ourselves, sail our ships out of the harbour to become more anti-fragile. And that's Taleb's book, Anti-Fragile. If yeah. I had it on the clearing, it's how do I get the deep roots or the, the bamboo, if you want to take that analogy, on the plaque. Anti-fragile would be the word. Yeah. And by the way, that made me think of that lovely adage, when all the ships are in the harbour, everybody's a good sailor. <laughs> Yes. And only when you step out to the choppy seas of adversity 
And one of my favourite quotes filmically, by the way, for the whole pandemic is Dory from Finding Nemo. Just keep swimming. Keep swimming. Just keep, just swimming, keep swimming. Keep swimming. Keep swimming. Keep swimming. And by the way, you, you've given me three words. I, I was really impressed with the question I asked you about a week ago. I said, look, I've just been given LinkedIn live status. Is this OK? We do that. You went, yeah. What's the wow. worst that can happen? And interestingly, I wrote down together. We will go with courage, confidence and conviction as we stride gainfully towards the clearing, trusting that we'll come up with something that'll be, you know, reasonable to listen to. Yeah. So I, lo I love the fact that accidentally I'm resonating with what's in the book. And uh, uh, awkward, I've not actually read it yet, but I don't think many have. It's not, it's yet to be reviewed. Just two days out. So yeah, so if you, you know, I I'd, I'd love it. And people are already saying, I've got the audible version. I'm narrating that. Good on so you. So that's, yeah, that's, that's it's, it's been good. And I think the three words are in there. I'm hoping that people um, can build stories. I think James Clear would say this because I read his book and built on his work. Yeah. Um, some of the other work that I built on Michael Bungie's standard coaching habit, other work that's in there. And for me, there's a, there's a stealing with integrity piece in me that says build on the other people's work and work. And so I'm hoping that somebody takes mine and makes it even better, um, listens to it and works even better on it. Yeah. Which links beautifully to the mindset of yes and where you build something yeah. next based on sort of building blocks of creativity. Um, so I don't hijack your three words because I think I slightly tweak them. Just set, reposition the words again that are the epicenter. Confidence, physicality, vocality, mindset, you turn up. Yep. And so if people want it, the analogy, I was on a plane once. We were getting off a plane. Gentleman got off of the seat, walked with confidence in a certain direction. Ten of us got off the plane, followed him. It was only when he went to the toilet, we realized we didn't want to go in the same direction. But that's that. People follow people because they do it in the right way. But so it, therefore. I was going to say at our age, if, if there's a, the opportunity to go for a wee, I, I would yeah. take it. I really would. <laughs> um, Conviction the, is be clear about the values that you're doing so uh, and embedding that and that's the biggest challenge for most people is to work out what their values really are particularly at the moment with so many clashing feelings that people are going through yeah, yeah. sorry you were going to say something uh, no, i was going to say um, um, because of my curation of the journey of this now um yeah. you've been inferring this anyway but um alchemy and gold now when when you colin hunter are at purpose and in flow mm. in what you've learned about yourself through the journey of life leadership and the book you know what are you happiest doing what are you here to reveal to the world i am happiest sitting listening to somebody who is struggling to to be themselves and, and struggling for a way forward because two things it allows me to practice my deep listening but it also, in that moment and that connection point where there's nobody else in the world but the, the two of us talking, I am at my happiest moment if I can help people to. And it was funny because the assessment center link, on Monday we ran an assessment center, recruited a new consultant. On the same day on LinkedIn, I got a message from somebody we'd rejected a while ago. And they can still remember that exercise they went through and what it did for them. And he just said, on your book launch, I just wanted you to remember that this has changed my career. That's where I am happiest. Yeah. Ooh. Uh, and by the way, t take a bit of smoke back at you from me, mm. because I still that, that, that is true. That that assessment center, you know, subliminally, overtly shifted a gear. Yeah. Because it gave me the confidence, I suppose, to think, oh, gosh, you know what? I could be quite good at coaching. La, la, la. And then 10 years later, here we are. Anyway. Yeah. All good. So now we're going to award you with a cake for gracing us with your presence here in the Good Listening to Your Life and Times Leadership Reflections episode. So uh, rather than just splotching it in your face, this is now a, a lovely multi-layered cake as the final storytelling metaphor, where the cherry on the cake, um, if I may, is going to take the form of stuff like your favourite inspirational quote that's always given you sucker and pulled mm -hmm. you towards your future. With the gift of hindsight, what notes might you proffer or advice might you proffer to a younger version of yourself? And then finally, forgive it, the fact this is multi-layered, but you, you'll, you'll take it where mm. I know you will. Inspired by a cheeky bit of Shakespeare, which is all the world's astute and all the men and women merely please. When all is said and done, legacy, Colin Hunter, how would you most like to be remembered? You're quoting one of my, my favorite band is Rush, the Canadian uh, rock band, and one of their albums, my favorite album, oh, World's a Stage. So you're talking my language there. Um, so let me do the quote first, because that's that's the easy one. And I mentioned the film earlier on, but my favorite film is It's a Wonderful Life. And the quote at the end that Clarence writes in the book, which is, no man is failure who has friends. And I even now, when I talk about that, you know, I can feel the emotion and 
and uh, the tears start to flow. So that for me is, and if I had to be remembered for something, it would probably be that I've influenced people's lives by being a friend and what I would call a true friend, which is being able to tell the truth, be there for people, support them uh, in the right way. Um, and note to, to note to my younger self is an interesting one because I don't think I would have listened to me <laughs> if I was younger. <laughs> I think I would have been blindly going, yeah, blah, 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 blah. I think for me, the I, I would say it's experiments. And I always remember being 21 and I had two separate groups of friends. And I thought I, I thought it would be a great experiment to bring them together because I thought if I'm friends with them, surely the two groups of friends brought together would work. Never worked. And I always wondered why, and I thought it was me, and I thought it was the way I did it. But actually, I realized that we are all so different, and life is a degree of experimentation, and then practice, have habits, systems, and we need to craft our own, and therefore we just need to get out of our own way, focus on that, and work it. So that would be my advice to myself, experiment. Lovely. And just say your lovely Clarence quote again, just to let that float there. No man is a failure who has friends. Yeah. Love it. As this is your moment in the sunshine, yes, we know beautifully you've written a wonderful book, Be More Wrong, and there is bemorewrong.com. As this is your moment in the sunshine, is there anything else, Colin Hunter, that you'd like to say? Yeah, I've got a new project, and this is my restless. <laughs> so once I've done something, it's like uh, it must be what an actor feels like when they've you know produced a film, and they're doing all the PR and the promotion, and they're going yeah yeah yeah, yeah but there's something over there that I want to go to now. And my new squirrel. <laughs> yeah, my new squirrel. And there's a project called the Five Hundred. We're kicking off, um, which is going to happen, and we're crowdfunding it. We're looking, but we're aiming to get groups of leaders, five hundred together, uh, of those. 500, 100 will be uh, not for profit. There'll be leaders who couldn't afford to do what we do. And we're going to give them a year of training them to be leaders and mentors. And at the end, what we're going to do with that is we're going to send them out and give them mentees, 18 to 30 year olds. And by the end of the 12 months, they'll be at the stage where they got exposed to so many different things that their curiosity will be sated, hopefully. Uh, in a way that allows them to go off um, and change the world. And it's, you know, we, we won't see the pay it forward principle comes in. We won't see the changes probably for four or five years. Like one of those great TV programs where they follow people for 10 years and then they say the differences. But that's what we're starting over the next year because firstly, Squirrel is in there going, come on, what next? Yeah. But secondly, why did I write the book if it wasn't to, to pass on some messages that have helped me and my client's stories that have helped me? to drive something different. So that's the 500 will be kicking off. If anybody wants some interest, uh, information on that, there's gonna be a website called the 500 dot um, network. Uh, we're kicking that off. But the aim of that is, that's my squirrel off, change the world for the 18 to 30s, yeah. And I love the fact that metaphorically in a really healthy way, you're, you're setting a sort of future focused depth charges that will just go down and yeah. an impact, yeah. playing it forward, coming full circle. Yeah, absolutely. Wonderful. So where can we find out more about Colin Hunter? Obviously, there's bemorewrong.com and the book. Uh, but, yep. but anything else you'd like to say about the websites of Potential Squared, International? Instagram at Be More Wrong. Um, you can find any hashtag Be More Wrong, you'll find us. Um, and the website for the business, which I'm proud of, is potential2.com. Potential, the figure 2com Come and join us there. Find us uh, about the VR, because that's immersion. The actors and VR is immersion and uh, why not, you know, go immerse yourself in a different world and learn something about yourself. That's what I've always done in my life. And I just want to give that back to other people by doing it. Yeah. Wonderful. So you've been listening to uh, the lovely man who I'm very, very happy to rediscover, by the way, Colin Hunter. Um, and I have been Chris Grimes. This has been a special Leadership Reflections episode of the Good Listening To podcast. It's hosted on Buzzsprout, the podcast proper, but Colin's also being brought into the UK health radio space where I have a weekly show version of it where the audience reaches potentially about 1.2 million. Uh, and Thor the dog. Thor the dog, you'll be at 1.2 plus one. Yep. Yes, but it could just be you, me, and a couple of squirrels. Who knows? <laughs> And also, thank you so much, sincerely, for trailblazing with me on doing this in this sort of multi, um, you know, 
great platform. We're multi-digital straddling because this is our first experiment. And thank you for being here. This is a moment in history for me. This is my first proper LinkedIn Live. Hurrah! I so, um, it. Round of applause for you, kind sir. Thank, thank you. you very much indeed. You've been listening to Colin Hunter. Buy the book, be more wrong dot com. What could be more right than that purchase? I've been Chris Grimes. This has been Colin Hunter. Good night. <laughs>